working out through the New Testament. Uh, this will be episode one. So I'll do a little introduction and then I'll just get right to the, uh, the first lesson. So came up with this idea uh, called working out through the New Testament, uh, which would be like a, a daily Bible reading plan uh, and a daily devotional plan where I read through the New Testament just one section of scripture at a time uh, goal, you know, a full chapter, more than a chapter, less than a chapter if it's really dense. But I just read a, a short passage of scripture uh, and use that uh, as my mental prep uh, before going and doing my workout for the day. Uh, so the idea is that while I'm working out, I'll be reflecting on the passage that I just read and, and thinking about the significance of that passage, uh, what it truly means, what it meant to uh, the original audience, the original recipients of the gospel message, to those who are present, the eyewitnesses that are, re that, are that were seeing with their own eyes the things that I'm now reading about, and thinking about how that passage can apply to my life to build up my own faith, uh, to strengthen my own pursuit of righteousness and godliness and living uh, to His glory. And so I wanted to share these uh, to encourage uh, anyone who wants to follow along to get into God's Word uh, more regularly, uh, but also uh, to, to be more physically active. Um, the, the reason that I came up with this little idea and little challenge for myself is that I found that I do some of my, my best thinking uh, when I am working out. Um, it just seems like when my body is working, uh, my mind starts working harder. So that's why I wanted to do this. Uh, so with that brief introduction, let's just get right into the first uh, devotional, if you will. So for, for today's episode one lesson, uh, I read the opening of Matthew. I read the first 17 verses of chapter one, uh, the genealogy of Jesus, the genealogy of Christ. And so because this is the first chapter of, of, a, of a book, uh, I'll give just a very brief intro to the book of Matthew. So Matthew, one of the, uh, Christ's apostles, uh, was uh, a Jew and was a tax collector. Um, and he is writing the gospel message uh, with a Jewish audience in mind. And so knowing who his original intended audience is, is significant because it kind of brings out uh, the way that he words certain things and kind of explains uh, why he included certain content that may or may not be included in some of the other gospel messages. So because Matthew's writing to a primarily uh, Jewish audience, uh, we see that he emphasizes the, um, the legal and royal authority of Christ, if you will. Uh, and that's why he really traces back the genealogy of Christ uh, to David, uh, recognized as the king for the Jewish people, and then also traces it back to Abraham, considered the recipient, uh, the, um, uh, you know, I just, I just lost the word for it, but uh, he, he's considered the, the pinnacle recipient uh, through whom all of the Jewish people would receive the inheritance from God. So by Matthew tracing back the genealogy of Christ through these, he establishes uh, Christ's identity as the true king from a royal standpoint through a sovereign standpoint, through a ruling standpoint of the Jews. Uh, but then by tracing back to Abraham, uh, he connects Jesus to the true heir of God's promises for the Jewish people and then that's later on explained by Paul through Galatians. And if you read more of the Old Testament and, and some more throughout the New Testament, you recognize that this heir, this inheritance, it's for, for all people uh, through Christ as the inheritor of that promise. Anyway, I just bring that up because it's important to acknowledge uh, that Matthew is, as a tax collector, uh, he's, he's going to be pretty on point with his record keeping. And the record keeping is extremely important to the Jews because establishing a genealogy uh, was what granted legal status. That's what granted property rights. Uh, that's also what allowed priests to maintain their priestly status. Uh, priests had to keep a record of their ancestry in order to show that they had proper authority to be a priest. If a priest couldn't show that they had uh, a priestly ancestry, 
then they were no longer allowed to maintain that office. And so that's why it's so important from the Jewish perspective that Matthew includes this genealogy and, and Matthew establishes Jesus as, as the king and as the recipient, the inheritor of the promises of God for all people. And so my true little daily devotional, that's just a little backstory for Matthew, is, and what I was reflecting on uh, while I was doing my workout, um, is, uh, I'll call it a word of the day, uh, is legacy. And I was thinking about uh, how the legacy of Christ was very complicated in his ancestry. And I think about how Christ did not come from a perfect family. He did not come from a perfect lineage. As you look back at all of, all of his ancestors, you see, sure, you see kings. Sure, you see godly men such as Abraham and Jacob and Isaac. And, and, and you see all these, you know, hallmarks of faith. Uh, but then you also see evil kings. You see wicked people. You see adulterers. You see idolaters. You, you see those that lie, those that, you know, worship false gods, those that murder innocent people. Um, and so what I would challenge you to think about is what is is your legacy do you define your legacy or do you let your past define it for you not all of us have the blessing of coming from a good solid uh you know christian home you know many of us may come from from broken homes may have parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles or siblings that uh may have have lived very um very sinful lives and so the challenge for us is are we going to to rise above those challenges are we going to use those challenges as excuses to enable us to continue living a sinful life or are we going to establish a new legacy for ourselves? hopefully one of faith hopefully one of servitude hopefully one that lives righteously for God and so those were the things that I was reflecting on that your past does not define your present and you define your future and you define whether you want God to be included in your future because that's the ultimate purpose uh, for mankind is to recognize Christ to recognize God and to seek out a relationship with him so that we can live with him in our eternal future all right that's our little devotional for the day so now for those of you that are interested in the workout of the day and would like to follow along uh, with your own workouts, feel free to do your own workout plan. But uh, if, if I can give you some ideas uh, and give you some inspiration on things to do, uh, today's workout of the day for me was a two mile run with 200 hand release push ups. And so if you do that, I would recommend breaking that up. Uh, the way I did it was, um, you know, quarter mile sprints. And then after each quarter mile, drop down 25 hand release push ups. Uh, if you are not training for an Army PT test and have no idea what a hand release push up is, then I would challenge you to do 400 regular push ups because, yes, the hand release push ups are approximately twice as hard as a standard push up. That's it for today. I promise that uh, the rest of these will not be quite so long, but I wanted to give a proper introduction so that uh, you guys would see where I'm coming from and uh, hopefully uh, be inspired to do your own daily reading and to do your own uh, daily fitness. Keep the faith, keep the fit. God bless.